Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Arthur Ashe Stadium, where tonight, a heavyweight prize fight. Roger Federer, the number one seed, taking on Andre Agassi, a two-time champion here. And as you know, we don't have to tell you, it has been raining all day long, and the threat of rain still persists. We may not get through this match, but let's cross our fingers, and hopefully we will be able to finish it. So it'll be Roger Federer in his first ever U.S. Open quarterfinal taking on Andre Agassi in his 12th U.S. Open quarterfinal. First point. Thank you, seat, please. The stadium not at all full, about half full, so there's a lot of movement. People coming into their seats, jockeying for position. As you can hear a plane flying overhead as well. Thank you. This is what they talk about when you have to beat New York as well as beat all the other players in the draw. There's always so much going on. Well, the problem is there's people behind Roger Federer that are drying off their seats with towels. So here's the first point, men's quarterfinal. played enough tennis, but if there's ever going to be a time where he'll look a little shaky Nothing from that left. Pavel walkover, it'll be right at the start. This will give us a couple answers here. Well, Federer making up for that missed backhand with his first ace. Well, everyone, even Andre Agassi agrees, when Roger Federer is at his best, he's unbeatable right now. Will he bring his best game tonight in this environment? Yeah, Andre Agassi said it. He does everything so well and many things great. And that's high praise from one of the best in the game in the history of the sport. 30-15, two aces for Federer to start the game. Agassi is going to work that Federer backhand. That's it. And in general, he's going to want to keep Agassi and Federer out of the middle. Use those sharp angles. He'll take a lot of pace off and roll it. Get Roger moving. Keep him moving. Now Roger Federer relying on that big serve. Both he's he's finally nodding in approval. And it brings Federer to game point. Every point he's got in this game has been from an ace. matchup that's going to be so much fun to watch as this competition unfolds between two greats. That Federer transition game and the Agassi passing shot. This is so good counter punch. This is still alive here. Deuce, first game. That plane goes over and you can't hear a thing. A smart serve. Spin because you a lot of times you want to pick up the sound of the ball off your opponent's racket to get a read on what kind of serve is coming. Throw in a spin serve, let you get a free one. So Federer finally gets the hole. Eight points to close out the opening game. He jumps ahead one love. Better, of course, the Australian Open and Wimbledon champion this year, trying to add a U.S. Open title. He's playing a guy, Andre Agassi, that very rarely loses in the quarterfinals. In fact, he's only lost two quarterfinal matches here at the U.S. Open. And I mentioned this is his 12th. Some of the quarters are better here. Andre Agassi, the last four years. That one quarterfinal, 2001, unforgettable when he lost Sampras. Four tiebreak sets that night. It was another under the lights match. Some of the best that they've ever seen oh, on yeah. this court. So 
we'll see the Andre Agassi serve here. Love one. Neither of the two players have been able to warm up very well, at least not right. on the court. Well, they've got a nice locker room with some fitness equipment underneath this stadium. Well, they, they both were scheduled for this night match, so they haven't faced the, the long day like some of the other players have, but you're right, they couldn't actually get out on a court and hit really before this match started because they're all wet. There are a few indoor courts on the ground. I'm sure they went inside. So maybe not such a big factor, but outdoors, indoors, a bit different. I guess he moves ahead 30-15 as a two-time champion here, won in 1994 over Michael Stieck and then in 1999 over Todd Martin, as we see his contingent of family, coach, and friend there. And that's where the accuracy of Andre Agassi is so devastating. Watch him pinpoint this cross court back in. And then takes a ball moving backwards perfectly into the open court. Agassi with a chance to hold much easier than Federer, 40-15. And he does. For one game apiece after two games. And it sounds loud in this stadium, but it's not even close to what we'd normally have, which is fully packed. And the energy that you get from that is what Agassi feeds off of so well. He's 23 and three playing at night here. Oh. Last night match he lost here was that match to Pete Sampras back in 2001 in the quarterfinals. Oh yeah, right on the line. Yeah, he helped soften up Sampras because Sampras played enough. staff for the next day. And then by the time he got playing late in Hewitt, he had nothing left. Well, because of the rainy weather and cloudy conditions, the flight patterns have changed at LaGuardia, so the planes are trying to fly more over the stadium than they normally do. Ah! So throughout the night, you're going to hear the roar of those jets flying overhead unless they do change the pattern once again. Better start now for Federer in this service game. 30 love. First double fall for Federer. It'll be interesting to see what happens with this crowd, Jeff, because the bottom level is not full at all. The middle level is, is pretty packed. And in years past, when this situation has happened, they've actually asked people to come down and fill the bottom seats. I think that's a great call, and they're going to probably do it within the next 45 minutes. They let some of the box seat holders, first of all, figure out that they're playing tennis. The schedule's been drastically changed. A lot of matches that were supposed to be here have been moved to outer courts. As Federer fires his fourth ace, he's in the game point. 28 That's miles an hour. That's his fastest of the night so far. Game. Yeah. Well, Federer with two holds to start this match, but it hasn't been easy. Still on serve, opening set. I just feel honored to be calling this match. Yeah, this is great to be sitting here and uh, great to have access to it. Because these are two of, of the greats in the game. Obviously, of course, will be in the Hall of Fame 
very shortly as soon as he decides to hang it up. Whatever the time period on that is, will be in. I think they make you wait five years. His wife was inducted over the summer. Actually, I guess he inducted her. Very moving speech. And Roger Federer, he is the one player we've mentioned it, but the other players on tour come out to watch play. And a lot of the greats of all time, the Rod Babers, Ken Rose Walls, they love to watch this young man play. Looks like they're bringing the people down already. And a lot more people starting to file into the lower bowl of the stadium, so you'll probably start to see more people in the seats as we move forward in this match. But you said, Sam, at the beginning, the first quarter final ever at the U.S. Open. And that just sounds it's strange it's because, it's because it's you expect so much of this player, and I get the feeling that almost certainly that he will be doing much bigger things at this event. Andre Agassi serving now at 1-2. Number one player in the world. Who's the moment Agassi lives for? 34 years old. To be able to measure himself against the best in his home country on this stage. First ace for Agassi. And that's the kind of serving that he's been doing since Cincinnati, since he had that resurgence after those three first round losses. Now that's going to be a factor tonight. Obviously, you talk about getting yourself out of trouble and saving great points, converting great points when you're returning. And it's going to be about serving. And how well does Agassi hold up? You know, Federer's already done it tonight. What an angle. Federer better is so quick off that split step on the return. He's so loose, he can extend out and be larger than he really is. Great oh. call. Second serve. Please, not another night of, <laughs> of controversy on the line call. Federer has shanked two ground strokes in this game, so he's definitely not in a rhythm yet. I guess he has another chance to hold from 40-15. Federer, his last match was against Fabrice Santoro, the crafty Frenchman. Fabrice didn't give him much of a rhythm at all. That's how Santoro wins matches. And then walk over for Pablo. So it's been a little while since Federer has seen a clean ball. Well, the game plan against Santoro for Federer was to hit as many winners as possible, to put Santoro away. Federer had 56 winners in that match against Santoro, 37 unforced errors. Against Agassi, he's not going to be able to hit as many winners. He holds, and it's two all. This is already shaping up to be a classic. Agassi needs to win this match tonight. To move one step further in history in terms of wins here at the U.S. Open. We move to third place on the all-time list for the win tonight. 15 up. Tied with Pete Sampras. Second serve. Better has one of the best. 
And Agassi has a great second serve return, so that matchup will be fun to watch. Agassi's second serve is attackable. He decided to go down the middle with it. You don't see that a lot. Federer made a nice little head fake. I guess he bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. And Federer almost pulled this passing shot off. And he was going right back to Agassi, going to test his volleys early. 30 15. Federer's going twice to Agassi's forehand with the second serve. He knows how solid that backhand is. Now game points for Roger Federer. Federer on his 300th career win. And he beat Marcos Bagdadis in the second round here. Five games, no breaks of serve, no yeah, break yeah. points. We get guys to to taking care of business here in the men's quarterfinal. <laughs> at the moment doesn't seem to be too phased by the environment here. Taking care of the service games fairly easily. First game was a little bit of a struggle, but once he got through that, he seems to settle down and Agassi. Steady as always. Semis, which is as far as he got last year. He beat Guillermo Coria in the quarterfinals here last year before losing to Juan Carlos Ferrero in the semis. Six unforced errors as we begin the sixth game. Oh. Roger Federer now really with his first opportunity on the Agassi serve. Love 30. He has not seen a break point so far. Neither man has. And now he'll have three. No fault Quick mistakes from Agassi here to start this sixth game. One 
saved. He's got two more. And he's going to need everything from that serve to get him through this. But you can see that pattern developing from Federer where he's not afraid to hit the ball short. He's so good with that slice back and he can keep it low. And he forces Agassi in. He forces him in to a zone where he's not so comfortable. 15-40. Two more chances for Federer. He's only won one point on his second serve in this opening set. But he wins the second at a crucial time. And now Federer is down to his last chance here. Thank you, Thank you. This is good to see that Federer is real. He's felt a little bit of nerves here these last two points. Sometimes he's so good. I wonder if he's fallible. Roger Federer gets the first break here in this yeah, opening set, and he moves ahead 4-2 to Agassi surrendering serve. Yeah, that would have been monstrous if Agassi had been able to pull a rabbit out of the hat there. Well, you mentioned Federer and the way he's won this year and appearing fallible. He's lost six matches. Federer has only six matches this year. It almost seems like the matches he loses are the ones in which he just says, okay, maybe I need a little break. Time to lose. He hasn't lost a really big match this year. The only big match I can think of, let me correct myself, that I think he lost was against Gustavo Kirten at the French Open. That was a, a big time match. It was very high quality, and Guga was just too good on the clay courts that day. But losing to Guga on clay is no, no embarrassment. The other ones I've seen Federer play this year when he loses, it's almost as if he's just not 100% there mentally. Well, do get the French, that's his home, won it three times there. Federer says that now that he's got the number one ranking, he wants to pull ahead. And he was the first one to qualify for the Houston Tennis Masters Cup. He wants to keep it that way. He wants to continue to make some distance between him and the next guy when he's brought. Better moves ahead 30 15. He's the earliest qualifier in the season in the Masters Cup in tennis history. Qualified for the Masters Series event in Canada this summer. Roddick has just qualified in the quarters here in the semis. Call Team 15. Let's talk about those matches that Federer lost. None of them were against a top 10 opponent. Every time Federer has played, Oof. According to Hawkeye, that was a missed call right there. Oh! Right by the way in the quarters. All this rain today has confused where we are in the tournament. <laughs> this is the uh, first men's quarterfinal to be played. Our body and Hinman currently playing. Game point, Federer. <laughs> will be playing his quarterfinal tomorrow against Joachim Johansson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Federer polishing off the game with his seventh ace, and he moves ahead 5-2 in the opening set. So it'll be Agassi serving after this changeover. Right on track where Federer has been against Agassi the past three times they've played. He's got just a little bit too much game right there. One little misstep, double ball, below 15. It's amazing at this level, at the highest level, at the pinnacle of tennis right now. He can't afford to do it. We saw how Federer is completely taking advantage of that. We've talked about Federer's only lost six matches this year. Let's go through them. He lost to Henman in Rotterdam in mid-February. Lost to Rafael Nadal in Miami. Both of those losses coming after he had just won big tournaments. In Rotterdam, he had just won the Australian Open and Davis Cup. He was tired. 
And he then went on to win Dubai, Indian Wells. And don't forget about Miami, he was sick. He got sick he coming went to from Miami, Indian Wells. Right, after the uh, Dubai, Indian Wells tournament. Played Nadal in the second round, lost that one. Then he went to, uh, took a lot of time off. Tight. I think he took like the, just about the whole month of April off. In case you're just joining us, Andre Agassi serving at 2-5 here to stay in it. We've been talking about the six losses of Roger Federer. Federer losing to him and the doll after winning events. Took some time off, lost to Costa trying to get his clay court footing. Lost to Kierton at the French. And his other two losses have come recently to her body in Cincinnati and Burditch at the Olympics. Having a good U.S. Open. Her body playing tonight in the quarterfinals against Tim Henman. And that's a sign of just how good Federer is, and the players after they beat him, Burdich and her body, play some serious tennis. Body and Roger Federer actually grew up to Dr. Federer says that he doesn't have that shot yet. That's the one shot in his arsenal he says he still needs to work on. This is one of those zone tests where he's feeling so good he's going for that and it's working. And that doesn't bode well for Anderson. No, two set points now for Federer. And Agassi saves one. That's too far too. We were worried about him possibly being nervous against Agassi tonight. Those concerns can be put to rest because you don't hit drop shots like that if you're at all uptight. It gave him two set points. That wasn't a small moment. Dries a bone. That was not about the moisture that has been coming down all afternoon. That's just a simple catching of the edge. Well, and the two set points evaporate, but Agassi's still not out of trouble. Deuce. Well, this is a massive moment for Agassi. Even if he loses this first set. You don't want to get broken twice and have Federer starting the second. At least hold your own here. Darren Cahill, Andre Agassi's coach. Many people whispering that he will next be coaching Roger Federer when Agassi decides to retire. Oh, what was that? That's called a smart serve, a nice little change up from Agassi. So 78 Agassi mile per hour. Comes back from 1540 down, two set points down, and he holds, but now Federer will have the opportunity to close out the set on his serve. And the way he's been holding, the odds are with him. I guess he has not seen a break point in this opening set. Better any ball down the middle short like that. Agassi normally so good about if he's going to go cross court, it gets there. That one didn't. Did I say he wouldn't hit as many winners against Agassi? As no. he did against Santoro? Oh! He's human! Well, 
Agassi was moving to that spot where Roger wanted to hit this backhand overhead, and that's what caused him to miss. He can see out of the corner of his eye that he's got to do more with it all of a sudden. 15 all. He's not as sharp as we've seen him. You can tell the respect he has for the player on the other side. He's trying to force it just like other players have done against him. Is he talking to himself? Right off the noggin. Under 29 miles an hour, too. Well, Agassi threatening here, 30 all. Again, he's not seen a break point this entire first set. Yeah, surprise, Federer went out to that backhand return at that second serve. 30 all, 5 3, first set. And that big serve, 130 miles an hour, gives Federer a third set point. First one he's had on his own serve, however. Got it. So Roger Federer getting one break in the opening set. And he takes it through all the way to the victory. Federer taking the opening set 6 3. It doesn't seem like Agus has quite gotten going. No, it seems like he's been the one affected more by all of this rain because, yes, they were scheduled for. Pretty much the same time that they walked out on the court, but there wasn't that certainty that you have when it's a beautiful sunny day. And as we both know, Agus is the type of player that has to have everything just the way he wants it. Very picky. And maybe he was not able to get into his pre match routine like he normally likes, whereas better he probably spent the afternoon sleeping. <laughs> He's just a laid back guy, you know? Better held. Really a big moment in hindsight now that he managed to keep Agassi guessing that he didn't have to face any break points. He played some good points down 15 30. And then from there he just pretty much settled in. And Agassi was the one that felt more the pressure. He knows how well Federer is playing. Roger Federer got to serve from in front in the first set, or the reversed here in the second. Time. Well, Andre Agassi dropping the opening set 6 3. He will serve from in front here in the second. We'll see if that makes any kind of difference. He will be the front runner as long as he keeps holding serve. First point, second set. and levels as far as Andre Agassi's serve. He's having to work so much harder. Federer's handling it. No problem, really. Only one ace for Agassi. Wow. Well, Agassi just has not found a way to hurt Federer. And he's starting to get that, get that look that he's playing his best. Against a player who loves to hit forehand winners. Better has got seven. Agassi has five. Better with 17 total winners. Agassi with eight. And Agassi needed that point. And avoiding going down. Love 40. Said 15 30. Someone of Andre Agassi's staff to pick up his game. You might see it right here now. He knows what he has to do. 30 all. Federer still in a good position here. Agassi needs to come up with this one. Yeah. 
Oh, brilliant. Legacy now three for four, excuse me, four for five when coming in. And that was a little bit riskier than what we see Andre normally do in coming to net. He took a chance there. I sort of think he's going to have to do that tonight against Federer. Take, take some more risks. Play a little bigger. And he must be getting the message because that's a big game from Andre Agassi. He really asserted himself and holds for a one-love lead here to start this second set on this rainy, humid evening in New York. The opening set taking a half an hour as we look back at it. Well, I don't know if Agassi could quote you the discrepancy in winners, but it looks like he felt it subconsciously and that Federer was taking his game to him. He was doing more with the ball. Now Agassi's starting to step it up. First service game for Federer in the second set. That point went as long as it did. That was massive for Agassi to win that. Because you start losing those exchanges, which is what Agassi prides himself on winning. Then it becomes troublesome. That was big. Well, all of a sudden, Start to feel a little electricity coming from that side of the court. And from this crowd. Federer falls behind here, 15-30. And Agassi hasn't seen a break point the entire match. See two. And the question, well, why didn't Agassi come in off that big forehand and take that last ball in the air? Because he's so much more comfortable using one extra ground stroke to give him that easy put away. And Agassi sees break point for the first time tonight, 1540. Thank you. Love one. Second set. Can you believe that? And Agassi breaks early in the second. Well, that's two now that we've seen from Federer. This is unheard of. That's a very routine backhand volley. He's missed the high backhand. Now he's missed that. I don't really know what happened here. It looked pretty good. Just cut it too close. And so Agassi takes control of the second. Breaking on his first break point of the match. Two love. Federer won the first 6-3. Well, I really think that one long point early on in that last game where Agassi grinded so hard and ended up winning it on a Federer air has set the tone here. He's built off of that momentum. Better shots seem to have lost a little sting at the moment. Oh. Especially in that last service game. First serves way 
under the speed that he's normally been serving. Agassi starting to find the rhythm. Yeah, you knew Agassi had another level or two in him, and he's starting, That's as you nice. said, Sam, to hit his shots that much closer to the line. Well, against Hewitt and Roddick in Cincinnati, he, after he would lose, he was only set in each match. Seemed to find another gear. Seemed to be able to take it to another level. And I just did not think that would be possible against Federer. Fox but Fox. Agassi's doing it. He's up 40 love here. This to go up three love. Almost as if he just got mad at himself after that first set. Now well, that backhand volley of Federer is starting to look questionable. And that's something that we rarely see, if ever. Well, it's been all Agassi here in the second set. Federer's only won three points in the first three games. Agassi leads three games to love, second set, first set, Federer. And this is that situation where the crowd, although half full, is starting to have an effect on this match. And it would be that much more profound if we played after a nice day instead of the rain scaring everyone off. Well, the Lindsay Davenport Chernobyl Asagoi match, which was going on over in Armstrong, is now over. So the people that may have been over there will be coming over into Arthur Ashe Stadium. I'm sure they've relaxed the uh, ticket policy tonight. They're probably letting people in that don't have a, a bought ticket for this facility because there's so few people here. It's been a long day of rain, so many of those who were supposed to be here have gone home or have not come out. After last week, a single day attendance record was set. So the crowds have been here, but not today. We've been told that tomorrow could be just as bad, if not worse, as today was. We're going to have to wait and see. We have no weather up here. And the Agassi. Time. Red hot right now. So it's Agassi, who lost the opening set 6-3 and has come roaring out of the gate here in the second. He needs to slow the A train down here. Love three. Seems to be just a half a step off. Just a second behind. There's only one two points on his serve this set. He's up his third. He did it. 30 15. Federer now with a chance to put a number other than zero next to his name here in this second set, 40-15. Oh. He does it. He did it. So Federer hanging in there, but it's Andre Agassi up a break here in the second set. 
extra first serves in it makes all the difference against this man it takes that rhythm away if he's seeing a lot of second serves he moves way inside the baseline with so much confidence off of ripping that sitter so better knows that he's created a monster here by not staying on top of Agassi early in the second Lost a Grand Slam quarterfinal since Wimbledon of 2001. Oh! Yeah. Well, we talked about how perfect he looked earlier, and that perfection has now given way Thought because he's know. missing shots that have nothing to do with Andre Agassi. And this is a layup. Well, now you start to question maybe that walkover from Pavel has affected Federer. His volleys certainly aren't sharp, especially the back end. Well, Agassi is, is dominating the second set. Not too strong a word. He's up 4 1. Federer to serve after the changeover. Second set, Andre Agassi's won 17 of the 24 total points, and he has yet to commit an unforced error. Five winners, no unforced errors through five games. Federer, only three winners and six unforced errors through the first five games. Well, you, you have to know that he's going to at some point, usually sooner rather than later, if he doesn't start off playing great, he's going to find a way to get there. It makes sense. The leading title holder among active players, this man, by a long shot. He's got 59 titles. Cincinnati was his 59th after a long drought. And he was second with 31. You see, he's won more hard court titles than anyone in the open era, 45. So, especially on this surface, I guess he's been dominant. But here in 2004, the Roger Federer. He's won a lot of his eight titles. A lot of those have been on hard courts. Time. The surface he normally is very good on. The majority of his titles have come on hard more than any other surface. Well, Federer looking a little sluggish here in this second set, but a lot of that probably has more to do with the other guy Maybe we'd like to take these. Federer now serving at 1 4 after winning the first set 6 3. Well, what Federer wants to find it's now is a consistent groove, even if you have to take a little bit off your first serve. Body and usually the forehand, if not the body. And that time he handcuffed Agassiz. It was about depth. Though. Oh. <laughs> Arguably one of the best returners in the history of tennis. His hand eye coordination, so good. Fans love it. And even if Agassi misses this one a little short, he's That's wisely it. going over the backhand side of Federer. Keep hammering that weakness if you see it. Agassi knows. We all. Oh. You know, 
It wouldn't be any fun, Jeff. If, uh, I guess he came out here and lost in straight sets. This is, this is good stuff. Or if either player won in straight sets. Everyone here has waited all day for this match. You'd expect it to go more than straight yeah. sets. Yeah. Well, Federer just trying to hang in the set here. Holds for just the second time. I guess he up 4-2 now. Saying, I guess he's got a lot to play for here. He doesn't want to accept the changing of the guard just yet. He said it's easy to say you can still play with the best, but until you actually do it, you never really know, and that's what Cincinnati proved for him in beating Moya, Roddick, and Hewitt successively. This is the ultimate test against the world number one. Oh. 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 You mentioned that confirmation in Cincinnati by Agassi. And to the avid tennis fan, they understand that this, the U.S. Open, where the infrequent tennis player watches and they pay only attention to this tournament. This is a whole nother level of confirmation for us. Better oh. trying to get himself going after that backhand winner saying, come on. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, with no one else to motivate him and Without having a coach, he's got to do it himself. 15 stretches. And it works. And the footwork there was just another extra bit of intensity of pop to those steps. 15-30, Federer threat. That serve that's going to save this man a lot of headache tonight if he can continue to do that in big points. I guess he's serving 70% for the match. First serves. with game point. It's a big chance for Roger Federer at 30 all. Chance to see a break point as we see the Agassi family. Little Jaden there. Wife Steffi. Stephanie is she likes to be called now. You're so PC, so <laughs> I don't want anyone in uh, Germany or somewhere <laughs> listening to us to get upset that I didn't call her by her real name. I want to make her mad. Better <laughs> beating Agassi to the punch. Well, this is what everyone was anticipating. You can see two of the game's best. Feeling each other out as one plays better, the other one raises their game, and now it's Federer's turn. And again, Federer given an opportunity here. Deuce. Only one breakdown. Oh. It's still I, bet it's, I guess he's quite back for Federer. For some reason, Federer has not played the big points very well here in this second set.
Well, Agassi definitely threatened in that service game, but the two-time champion here holds, and he's a game away from leveling this match. Agassi leads 5 games to 2. Second set, first set, pretty away. Agassi's ground strokes are so tough to beat. Agassi. Some big numbers here tonight. Ten winners, two unforced errors in this set. Mm -hmm. Very clean second set, learning from his mistakes of the first. Went after that backhand of Federer. That high backhand return is where he, if at all, will give you some errors on the return side. And what Agassi does so well, at least what he's doing tonight, is staying down low on that backhand because Federer's slice is so tough to handle if you don't get down to it and generate a lot of racket head speed. Agassi going with a new racket. Playing with new balls after this changeover. Time. Roger Federer trying to stay in the second set now. He looked so good in the opening set. Agassi's well, picked up his play. We'll see if Federer can deal with it. Sardisian match that Andre played is that he didn't have to work very hard at all. One of his best friends out there on tour, if not his best, there's Mats Wielander. Mats Wielander. Roger Federer will be trying to be the first man since Wielander to win three Grand Slams in a year. Last time it was done, Wielander then in 88. Agassi's fresh as a daisy right now. He hasn't had to work hard really at all in any of his matches against Florian Meyer. He was stretched, but got to retire in the fourth, early in the fourth. 30. 15 seconds. I guess he's saying, get some net clearance. When you're on defense, make sure you get it over the net nice and high and deep. You don't have to do too much. Is he looking for a set point? And he'll have two. He breaks twice, and the second time gives him the second set. It's a two out of three set match now. A spot in the semifinals on the line. And that was such a nice exercise in how Agassi Once intellectually addressed the situation going on here. He understood that he came out a bit flat he had some opportunities early on in the match, and then it kind of went away, but figured out that in the second set, he needed to just keep some more balls in play as the turns got sharper. Ground strokes warmed up. And it's as expected. 
so comfortable here in New York. He's won here twice. But now the plot thickens because he knows you've got to expect Roger Federer to come right back and do a little analysis himself and make some adjustments. Better knows how important this match is. But he's never gotten this far at the U.S. Open. And even though he says he doesn't mind the New York City and all of its distractions in a way, I still believe it affects him. Well, it certainly runs counter to his personality. That's Well, 34-year-old Andre Agassi keeps his hopes alive for winning a third U.S. Open title. He would be the second oldest man ever to do so if he could put together a couple more wins here. Ken Rosewall, the oldest. And Agassi serves to start the third set. One set apiece. 15 up. Roswell was 35 years old when he won the title here in 1970. And this match now only an hour old. We played the first couple of sets pretty quickly. Magasi doesn't waste much time back there. That's unbelievable. Agassi adjusted. Federer got the ball down low. He did what he had to do. Box enough. And look at those hands. That's the intangible that we didn't know how it was going to play out tonight. And Agassi's transition, he gets the net now, has been excellent. Nine of ten. Wow, a love hold to start the third. Agassi sending a message to Federer. There is no drop off of play. You can't do much better than to start off the third set the way Agassi just did. Four first serves, ridiculously good low backhand volley. Now he's well on his way here. This is how the second set shakes out. Agassi, great high percentage of first serves. Better, even better. So it's really about Agassi giving himself an opportunity to break and doing it twice. Not making mistakes. Very few unforced errors for Magasin. Love one here, third set. Better won the first, 6-3. Agassi took the second, 6-2. Nothing changed. Agassi has figured out a way to ride this adrenaline. Agassi's taking the first five points of the third set. Effectively. See, he's struggling now to break down that Agassi ground stroke game. He can't get up there. Federer's only been in one more time than Agassi in this match. Federer has come up 12 times. He's only won four points. Agassi loving that target. Thank 
Five Dagas, he backed up. And he had another opportunity to come in. He's been so successful. Another legend in the house. And this has a bit of that Jimmy Connors feel, Agassi at 34. <laughs> trying to take out the young Federer. Federer's not going to go quietly, though. Federer trying to pick it up. Guillermo Vilas. It's got to be so much fun for those players to come back into a house where they've been so successful. And during the rain delay, Tim Hinman is playing backgammon with Billy Nastasi in the player lounge earlier today. Nice mix of the old and new here at the Grand Slams. Definitely bring out Faulty the best in tennis, young and old. Everyone wants to see these two play. And Federer gets to game point after Agassi was up love 30. Second game, third set. And that's what rat has rattled Federer tonight. Yes. He usually likes to. Mix in that serving volley, take a nice slice backhand, come in, and he's generally successful, but not tonight. Agassi's taken that game away from him. Oh. He won four out of 13 net points. Agassi's won 10 of 11. He's taken the net away from Federer, and now he's winning the baseline rallies. And he's got a break point to do what he did in the second set and go up two love to start it. And then what he's been known for, his signature shot, is the return. So he's neutralizing the Federer serve as well. And it's clearly gotten Federer a bit rattled. had an ace in a while. Yes. Good time for one. With a great point saved for the moment. Oh, oh my, and now a double fault, his first of the entire match. Well, eventually, you have to feel that pressure from Agassi. Everyone does. And that's, in my opinion, what created that last ace saving break point. You know you've got to do it. Yes. So two break chances. Come and gone here in this second game. Well, it's 6 o'clock out in the west coast of the States. I wonder if Pete Sampras is watching this match. <laughs> you know, he says he doesn't watch a lot of tennis these days, but I bet he is. I'm sure he's probably watching this one. No getting by Federer there. And the number one player in the world getting to game point, fighting through two break points. A good hold for Roger Federer. And it's one all, third one set. Game point before that last game point that Federer won was important for him. He's got to keep coming forward. He's got to trust that 
his volleys will sure up. Agassi really taking the net away from Federer so far. You know, you get predictable on Agassi. He's going to exploit you. Now for Agassi. Agassi yet to drop a point in his first two service games. Wow, this is amazing. Coming into this match, you'd think that Federer would hold a little easier than Agassi. At least Fox maybe with more authority, more flash. But Agassi has just been so strong on his service games. Seventh point in a row here in this third set. And 12 forehand winners. Sign of a let up from 34 year old Andre Agassi. We stay on serve here in the third. Agassi leads two games to one. First set, one set all. Well, let's see, we got John McEnroe here, we got Jimmy Connors here, Guillermo Vilas. That's Vilander. That's Vilander. Missing. We're missing Lindell. Stan Edberg. Smith was running around <laughs> down below with his family. Well, of course, there's a, a senior division that a lot of the players play in. But Connors, Vlander, those guys are not playing tennis here. They're here to watch. Well, it's a huge compliment for these two. If you could have a reunion four times a year, wouldn't you show up <laughs> and get paid for it? That's the beauty of the afterlife of being number one in the world and winning Grand Slams. The little fringe benefits. Andre Agassi, his legs are so fresh. He was quickly up to that. He moves as well as anyone on tour. And it almost gets boring to talk about the fact that he's 34 years old. He was the oldest player entered into the draw. Because yeah. it doesn't seem to affect him. Well, his, his career is one that I know we'll time. be talking about for a long time. Longevity. Well, Andre Agassi having his way with Roger Federer so far. Andre is 11 years older than Roger Federer. Thank you, Sid, please. Thank you. 23, Agassi 34. 23-year-old number one in the world learning some lessons tonight from the former number one. I guess he says he's playing with the house's money right now. It's all gravy. Oh! Second double fall for Federer. And for whatever reason, Federer just can't seem to stay comfortable out here. 15. Agassi was four feet inside the baseline when he made contact with that. And he's gotten closer and closer to the service line as this match has unfolded. Well, I guess he's such a cerebral player. It would be pretty tough to beat him four times in a row. He 
He's going to break those matches down and try to learn from them. Now 30 all, so Agassi once again in a position to threaten. And two break points earlier in the first Federer service game. And you can't see that to make a discrepancy in experience. Yes, Federer has won Wimbledon twice in the Australian Open this year, but he's still a newcomer in the Grand Slam world. Held the number one ranking since February. And Federer. And Federer settles down. Comes back to hold. So two all. Two games so. The exception of 1997. Andrew Agassi's finished himself inside the top 10 since 1994. Here we are in 2004. Fifteen other had 30 unforced errors in his first round against Costi. He's got 25 now. Was a three setter against Costa. 37 against Santoro. So he's getting a little bit too close for his average so far in this tournament. Oh. that we were worried about the atmosphere in here. I don't think we need to worry anymore. This is a pretty electric place right now, despite not being nearly as full as it would have been without the rain all day. And the more the better for Agassi. Loves playing at night, loves playing in front of a huge crowd. He and Roger Federer. Excuse me, he and Andy Roddick. Yeah. And Roddick will get his turn tomorrow. 40-15. Agassi now up 40-15, trying to move to 3-2. Yeah, I guess he and Agassi does it. He's only dropped one point on serve here in the third set. And he moves ahead 3-2. Three, two. three to two. First set, one set over. So there's a certain feeling to this in that Roger Federer said that he had a couple goals coming into this year. One of them wasn't to win the U.S. Open. Agassi has a different agenda. He's trying to stay in this game as long as possible at the highest possible level. And he said he's not just doing it for himself. He's doing it for his foundation, the prep school, the academy that he started, the private school that helps so many inner city children in Las Vegas, gives them a chance to better themselves. Well, for a while, it almost seemed like that was more of a burden on Andre Agassi than something that really drove him or gave him inspiration. But now that he's kind of picked up his level of play here in Cincinnati, uh, he does seem to be more inspired with the tennis. I remember last year we talked about that. It almost seemed like he was you know, sort of tormented by the fact so many people were depending on him. And then he was Time. trying to move through to this next stage of life. I think there's, there's uh, thoughts of going the wayside. Right? Maybe he's having fun again. Well, Andre Agassi entertaining 
what would normally be a full house here at Arthur Ashe Stadium, but tonight not quite full because of a day full of rain. And Federer would probably like to see it start raining about right now. And he's not been in his normal Roger Federer rhythm. And even there, he looked a bit rushed. He wasn't set up for that last forehand volley of Agassi had made that over the net. He'd kamikaze a bit. Oh. That's enough. Great show. Forty lots. That was a can open. Overrule on the serve gives Federer his 10th base. No argument from Agassi. Outside of the line. Just next to the chair on pot. Of course, the fans here are not all that happy about it. So Agassi's their guy. Game points. Game Federer. Well, the first love hold Roger Federer's had in a while. That was quick. And it's three all. Set. Seeing that score reminds me how close this match still is, even though it's kind of felt like Agassi's grabbed a little bit of the momentum here. It's still anybody's match. It's enough. I guess he's working those corners, those outsides. Handling away at that forehand on this court. And that kicker out wide worked so well on the last point. Oh, yeah. Couldn't have walked it over there any better. That's your 15. That's just high level tennis. All three shots in that point were dead smack on. Uh oh, 30 all. I guess he needs to tighten it up here. Cut your own. not broken since the opening set. Look, I can see twice in that first set. <laughs> and no break chance yet. Agassi responds 40-30. What great work on this point. Agassi tracks this forehand and gets enough on it. Make sure he gets it cross court. If that ball sits in the middle, Federer's going to pummel it. Doing such a great job of keeping Federer moving, keeping him off balance. Well, Agassi winning the big points. And he moves ahead 4-3, but we're still on serve here in the third set. Each man, one set. One set over. Now, this place is getting exactly what they want. So are we. Couldn't yeah. be more even right now. Day. These two are not disappointed. I can see a nice distribution, even 
Going down the middle, and you see he's going to that Federer backhand consistently on the second serves. And especially in that ad side, he's trying to work that ball short and out wide, keep Federer moving off the court. And here's where Roger Federer is serving a lot more body serves. Agassi stands in so close, you try to handcuff him, take the time away from him. That's where you see a lot of those second serves, especially going right in the center of the box. Time. Federer serving now 3-4, third set. One set apiece. Starting to press here, but there's a break in this game would mean he would serve for a two sets to one lead. It's fun to watch those eyes of Andre Agassi. I love that you know. sixth sense that Agassi seems to have, that sitter that Federer had on the forehand, the second shot there, Agassi guessed right. He just felt it. Stayed there. Got a backhand down the line. He just zones in. Let's see. For sure. Good job of coming back, staying ahead, 30-15. Well, he's let Agassi right back in it. But there certainly has been more pressure on Roger Federer this third. Critical break here. 30 all. And he misses the return. So Federer with a point now to make it four all. Gift from Agassi. And moving through now to the tense moments of this Hogan third Swiss. set for all. Each game so critical in this stage forward. Each man's going to pull out a new racket with the new balls being brought out. That's getting more and more common these days. So what happens here, though, Jeff? Do, do the other rackets that they've used get sent back out, or do they bring enough to handle as many ball changes? I mean, you never know in a five-set match how many ball changes you're going to have. Well, that's a good point. They'll get some strung right away. There's a stringer right on site, so they can work those out. Now this is showing Federer the new balls. Four all, third set. But you like to have that same tension with the new balls, the same feel. Timers are saying, oh, these guys are just being mental about it. <laughs> and, yeah, hours. that might be the case, but once you start down that road, it's tough to break yeah. out of it.
fun to watch, aren't they? Well, the most fun about it is seeing who's going to raise their level first. They've traded that role in the first and second. Now they're dead even pretty much. Federer's had to face two break points. Agassi has not faced a one in this set. And that might make the difference if Agassi can hold here without facing a break point. We'll see what Federer has when they come around the other side. Well, Agassi moves ahead 30-15. Trying to get to 5-4, keep the pressure on Federer. for Agassi. Oh. 14 touches. I knew that was a mistake as soon as the ball hit the racket. That was just one of those computer glitches that you don't know where it <laughs> came from. It just happened. All you can do is try to forget about it as quickly as possible. Good time to do it up 40-15. He still has a game point here. 40-30 to go to 5-4. And he's got it. The fans are loving it. I guess he needs five games. Federer to will have to hold to stay in the third. Feel for Agassi because you think back about that match in the quarterfinals just like tonight where Agassi played his guts out and lost to Pete Sampras, his nemesis in a way. So many big matches that Sampras won a lot in Grand Slam final. That but was back in 2001 when they played the, the quarterfinal here, of course then Agassi lost to Sampras in the finals a year later. knows how much he's put into the sport. He's been around for so many years. He came out at such a young age. In his first ATP match, I guess, when he was 15 years old. He's been that way ever since. The prodigy. Better did a little bit more through the ITF Junior. Won Wimbledon, the Junior. More traditional throughout those ITF events. Are are so numerous, that's where most of the great players are coming from. Time. Well, after 90 minutes, here we are in the third set. Roger Federer having to hold to stay in it. He won the first set 6-3, Agassi won the second 6-2. Roger Federer over there, I and mean, maybe Andy Roddick, and a handful of others. I'd say this is the moment where Agassi brings his game to another level and breaks serve, especially after putting pressure on his opponent. Federer is a different animal. And Agassi did that against Roddick and Hewitt this summer. Not 
against Federer. Not yet. He almost had that. That's enough. He measured it, just barely missed it, and then you talk about his computer. That fraction of an adjustment gets it dead on the next time. Better just pulling his head back in disbelief. See now two points from the set. That's your own. Thank you. Thank you. Quite please. Thank you. Better gets the game point instead of set point. First serve out wide, stretching Agassi. You don't want to go into that two-handed backhand when it gets tight. Better loves to play the percentages. If he's taking that second serve, I can see the first if he's feeling comfortable and confident on the ad side going out wide. That's a standard play, but taking that second serve, the Agassi two handed back in the turn. He loves hitting that shot. Well, Federer is still not out of trouble. Thank you. Trying to keep this set alive. Game point for five all. And Federer holds with an exclamation point. Five all. Well, that's a nice exercise in the book that you put together and strategy and where it meets what you like to do, your game. Agassi says he loves to impose his game on others, and that goes right up, and that's where we saw Federer do what he felt most comfortable, even if it meant going into the stronger side of the return of Agassi. Going in and Agassi not handling it properly. That was fortuitous for Federer because those balls are very difficult to handle. It's a little breezy as well. Oh. And now love 30. Remember, no breaks here in this third set. Even though it feels like Agassi's leading, he's not. This crowd can be somewhat deceptive. 15-13. Agassi's still in trouble. 15-30. Better with no break chances in this third set. Looking for his first.
Petiel. Better was looking to watch that ball go for a clean winner before he finished the shot. First break chance as a result of Andre Agassi's second double fault, his first of the set. And a break here would allow Federer to serve for a two sets to one lead. is broken. The crowd falls silent. Roger Federer will serve for a two sets to one lead. One set to one. Wow. Well, full marks to Federer, but that was also a product of a little bit of luck. And how many times you see that millimeter of luck work in your favor, and sometimes it goes against you. But the first point, the mishit shank that Knuckleballed up into the air, Agassi missed it. And then the last point, that lead court could have easily rolled over for Agassi, and that would have changed that game complete. Back to Deuce, instead it's a quick break. And Agassi didn't feel any pressure on his serve until right here at the end. And now Federer's got to do one of the most difficult things, put Agassi away when he's returning. Federer just so stoic, so seemingly unaffected. A lot of times with these changeovers, you don't want to think about anything. Just relax the mind. So Roger Federer has been very patient. And he has finally gotten his opportunity. He'll serve for a two sets to one lead. 6-5 here in the third. Thank you. Starts it out with a double fall. Spots Agassi a point right from the start. Love 15. Agassi's doing that to the best in the business. That's how good his returns are. Good stuff. Fifty no. He took a chance, relied on his hands. That's a good pair of hands right there to get that defensive lob back at least to no man's land. Especially after he double faulted in that box the time before. Well, Federer after the opening double fault has won the last three 15. points. And now he has a couple of set points. And 
Roger Federer is up two sets to one. Seven games to five. Federer is by two sets to one. Proving why he's number one in the world. That's a good point, Sam. That's really what this is all about for Federer. I don't think he's thinking about winning the tournament just yet. You've got to take it one at a time, but it's that enjoyment of being the best in the world, of playing such a great year of tennis last year and not getting it. Andy Roddick edged him out. Even though Federer won that Masters Cup. As soon as he got it, the Australian Open, he hasn't let go. It's just so strange because the whole feel of that set until the Federer break was that somehow Agassi was going to win. What are we going to expect? What will we see when it's all said and done for Federer? We see Agassi. Riding into the sunset at some point. Roger Federer is just coming up on the horizon. Will he contend with those 14 grand slams of Pete Sampras? Time. So Andre Agassi gets to begin the fourth set serving, but he's in a hole now. Down two sets to one. Federer breaking at five all in the third set. First break for Federer since the opening set. First point, fourth set. Oh. up into the stands. Better needs to strike here. And I can see a little bit down. See the unforced errors. 30 all. And this is where Andre Agassi seems to start off well in the fourth here. He doesn't want this crowd to go away. He doesn't want to get them to get discouraged right from the start. Start thinking defeat. Keeping Federer in it. Now the water's starting to come down. Oh no, this could be good for Agassi in a way. Well, they're going to leave the court. This is a heavy rain. So they'll head over to the changeover at Deuce in the first Thank game of the fourth set. Welcome back inside Arthur Ashe Stadium, everyone, for a resumption of the Andre Agassi Roger Federer quarterfinal, which began last night. And yes, you don't need to adjust your screen. The sun is shining here at the National Tennis Center. So when we left you last night, it was the very first game of the fourth set. Agassi serving. The score is deuce. And that's where we're going to pick it up. It is a very windy, humid afternoon here in New York. Much different conditions than where we left off last night. So we'll see how this wind affects both of these two very clean yes. ball strikers. It's Agassi, Agassi to serve now. Ready. I'm Sam Gore along with Jeff Grant. As we pick up action here, first game, fourth set. The score is deuce. 
Yeah, this crowd immediately trying to get behind Andre Agassi. They know he's got to do something here. The match is over. He's got two sets to one down. No advantage, Agassi. Two straight points for Agassi gives him the opening game of the fourth set. We just watched the double semifinals. Knowles Nestor took out Benito Mau. And it was so windy and has not let up at all. We saw the first couple of hits from both players here in the single safe down the middle. And this wind is going to benefit Andre Agassi. His strokes are so compact and he's such a great ball striker. He's had such good timing. Better has a little bit more loop to his strokes. He likes a more pure environment. Love one, fourth set. Backhand. Let me challenge that theory a little bit, Jeff. What about Federer's ability at the net? Can he get into the net and cut off some of these balls before the wind really has a chance to affect it? Well, he could, but then you're coming in against Andre's strength. Agassi, similar to Hewitt, loves the target. He loves to hit passing shots. it out just to give you an idea where we are statistically in this match of course Federer up two sets to one he won the opening set Agassi took the second and Federer came back broke at five all and then held for a 7-5 third set win and in that third set Agassi was two points from taking that third Federer was serving 4-5 30 all Agassi 15-30 for the match now. Agassi with 26 total winners, 27 unforced errors. Federer with 36 winners, but 35 unforced errors. However, conditions quite different. So the stats from last night, not really a factor today. Oh! And that ball called just long. Even Federer took another look at it. But what is a factor is the crowd today. They're going to slowly build. You can see this stadium filling up. Last night was desolate. About half the stadium, it wasn't going to grow any larger. It was getting later into the evening. No one was going to come out. Well, Federer got it, but he held his hand up in apology. As that lob was blowing all over the place. Federer did a good job just to even make a play on it. Game point for one all, fourth set. Another ball, you can see how the wind is affecting his game. Is that the more people in this stadium, the better it is for Andre Agassi. Agassi 
just judging the win there. Federer with a chance to hold. I think this would be an important hold for Federer, not just because of getting the game, but he has not yet looked really comfortable out there. He seems a little agitated. Does indeed get that hold and pumps his fist a little bit. One game one gets one. a little sigh of relief. Federer holds one all here in the fourth. Roger Federer in his first ever U.S. Open quarterfinal, but he hasn't lost a quarterfinal match in quite a while. Go back to 2001 Wimbledon for that to have happened, and for Agassi, quarterfinals for the 12th time. <laughs> Quarters are better here each of the last four years. Last year reaching the semis, losing to Juan Carlos Ferrero. Understand that. Get used to it. First one to get settled in is going to have a huge advantage. Sorry, sir. Okay. Thirty love here. Oh! I'm going to say the only <laughs> positive thing about this whole atmosphere today is the fact that it's not raining. It's just windy. Sun's so supposed to peak in and out for the remainder of the day. 30-15, one all, fourth set. <laughs> and Federer threatening here, 30 all. That's it. Experience for Federer. Agassi gets to leave this match last night, confer with his coach and those in his entourage about what he needs to do differently for Federer. There is no coach. There is no entourage, with the exception of his girlfriend and a physical trainer. So he has to rely on himself or some friends, perhaps, that may have been watching the match. away with it. That's it. The elements will make even the best look marginal. This is not what you'd call a, a good drop shot. But it flew around enough to throw Agassi off and now Federer with a break point here in the third game of the fourth set. First piece of real tension here today. Yes. He didn't get an ace out of it, which he's been able to do, or at least a big unreturnable since Cincinnati, but he did get another one of his favorite shots at forehand. Deuce. Let's
break point for Federer. Legacy, of course, one of the hottest players on the tour coming into this U.S. Open. In Cincinnati a few weeks ago. Just out. He's within the margin of error from Hawkeye. Players play so close to the lines. They're so fine-tuned. Some more debris. Roger's going to make sure that that doesn't have an effect on this huge point right here. See in Cincinnati beating okay, thank you. Moya, Roddick, and Hewitt successively give him the confidence to take into this match against Federer. The belief that he can win a third U.S. Open and ninth Grand Slam. And Agassi fights again and erases the break point. Yes. I always like to save those big moments with your favorite shot. That's twice now Agassi's been able to set himself up with a forehand. Finally, with a chance to hold here. Is he getting to serve from in front here in this fourth set? Keep holding. He always puts the pressure on Federer to have to hold. Run out the set quicker, serving from in front. Beats Federer in this game. And still trying to get comfortable out here. As officially, this match has lasted two hours. Third ace from Andre Agassi, first today. And again, game point. Just inside two lines, and that breeze is blowing across the court a little bit from Agassiz's back. And be able to adjust to the wind that fine tuned way. to the U.S. Open he's had. Quarterfinalists in Los Angeles. Second round Canada. One Cincinnati, Sunnies of Washington. And now here at the quarters of the U.S. Open. And Agassi holds. We face some break points in that game. But the 34-year-old two-time champion here gets through it. In L.A., his first round against Alex Bogomola Jr. finally got that 800th career victory. He was stuck on 799 for a while. Lost first round St. Colton. A lead up to the French. Then he lost first round the French. And then he lost the first round the very next turn. Lead up to, yeah, the lead up to uh, Wimbledon, and then he just said, that's enough. We're pulling out. Well, this surface is the only surface Agassiz won a match on all year. So we to pull out of Wimbledon. 
Hard courts are Andre Agassi's specialty. Really more hard court titles than any other man. More titles in general than any other actor by far. Roger Federer, his lead into the U.S. Open, he was a winner in Canada, including Andy Roddick in the finals there. Got to Cincinnati, admittedly exhausted, and lost to his good friend Dominic Rabati in the first round there. And the big disappointment of the year for Federer losing in the second round of the Olympics to Thomas Burch. Just underway here in the fourth set, a resumption from last night's quarterfinal. Each man has held so far. Federer did have break points in the last game, unable to convert. Now he serves at 1 2 in the fourth set. It's one of two men's quarterfinals continued from last night. Tim Hinman and Dominic Herbati continuing their quarterfinal right now over in the grandstand. They're about to go into the fourth set as well. Hinman up two sets to one. Better to serve. One, two, fourth set. Well, I, I think we'll see some of the artistry between these two, the, the shot making creativity because of this win today. Enough of team. We'll see them attempt some shots that they normally would not try to play this win. Not hit through it. Fifteen minutes. Let's look at the wind at the top of the stadium blowing hard. It swirls around through this stadium. And Often changes direction down on the court surface. Right. They're getting caught by it. It's just a matter of who's going to be more patient with these conditions today. I think that's going to be a big factor. Shots like this that make the average player feel good as he sees the best in the world be humbled. Opening for Agassi, 15-30. Federer has been visibly irritated today. And there are some mixed emotions going on with Federer because That's part of him loves the fact that he can still walk around New York and be pretty untouched. Anonymous. Exactly. Thank you. I was looking for that word. <laughs> it's okay. And he can remain incognito even in this city, but as he starts to do more, and especially in this tournament, in this match right here, he'll start getting recognized. And he says that's also good as a personality. You want to be known in one of the biggest markets, the biggest market in the world. Break point here for Agassi. Federer had break chances on the Agassi serve, could not convert Agassi's first chance here in the fourth. No. Agassi screaming at himself as soon as the ball touched the racket. He did that last night as well. Yep. Just out of the blue, he decides to go for this drop shot. He looked up at Darren Cahill also. Federer saves the break point. Agassi actually saving it for him. Cut. And now moves to game point. Well, for the match, Agassi has converted twice out of five attempts. Federer twice out of eight. Agassi 
in the opening set and in the third set. I can see both of his breaks of the Federer serve occurred in the second set. of the match overall for Roger Federer. Using the game point. <laughs> Federer closes in, puts it away. Two all here in the fourth. And the amazing thing about this wind on this court is that we're in the biggest tennis stadium in the world. And it's deep. And it's still able to get down and affect the match like it has. Imagine playing on some of the outside courts today. Well, I can see Federer having to deal with a lot more than tennis balls. You're right, the stadium seats just over 23,000. It is the biggest stadium in tennis. the blue through on that point. They're laughing. He's got to keep the sense of humor about it. As tightly strung as these nets are, you can even see it blowing through the, the uh, nets. I can see ripping the passing shot, and it's 30 all, excuse me, 30 love. That's you have to keep your approach shot safer in this wind, and that's what makes it tough for Federer to use that transition. There's the Agassi family watching from not too far away in one of the luxury boxes. Agassi directing a ball boy back to his position. Not allowing the wind to affect him yet. On serve here in the fourth, Federer will serve at 2 3. Last night, Agassi found himself down two sets to one. In the other quarterfinal, Tim Henman was up two sets to love and had a break in the third set before her body broke back. They were on serve when they left the court last night. And Today, since they've been back, her body was able to break Hinman and take the third set. And now it's Tim Hinman up a break in the fourth set. That match on the grandstand, which is not covered by television, so we can give you that result and not have to worry about ruining it for you later. I can keep you up to date on that match. Sam, we didn't get a chance to see any of that tennis, but I did hear that Hinman got a little bit tight up a break in that third, serving for the match. Not really serve for the match, but all he had to do was hold for the match. This is Tim Hinman's first U.S. Open quarterfinal, just like it's Roger Federer's. Hinman is up a break in the fourth over there right now. Hey, Hinman did it at Roland Garros yeah. on clay. Why not here in the Absolutely. part of the U.S. Open? Hinman surprised semifinals for Roland Garros earlier this year. This year's number five seed. Well, here in Arthur Ashe Stadium, two of the game's best. Roger Federer, the number one player in the world, taking on former number one, two-time champion here, Andre Agassi. Federer with a two sets to one lead, serving now at 2-3, fourth set with new balls. Oh.
conditions not allowing for as pretty a tennis as we saw last night. Survival of the fittest here. Survival of the mentally fittest. At that net shoot. down to be close to the court. Anchor that stuff as much as possible. Second serve. Ah. He directs it out. Oh, to the 40 love for Federer. I think the best play here is to just hit for the middle of the court and <laughs> see where it blows. That's what we saw in the beginning. Yep. Oh. Well, Federer yeah, tossing yeah, yeah. in a softball serve that works. Holds for three all now as he's going to go over to his changeover area. Let's see what he's going to do here. Well, we know something's amiss. We'll probably change rackets here. Usually they'll do it with new balls. But you know something's amiss when Andy, uh, Andy Roddick, when Andre Agassi misses three fairly routine returns in a row. Four to lose that game. Well, Leighton Hewitt and Tommy Haas are scheduled to follow this match. I wonder if they're in the locker room watching this. They won't be completely blown away by these conditions. Wow. It's too bad. Nothing follow baseball, that's like a Charlie Huff knuckleball. Happens to a baseball, you put zero spin on it and just moves any which way. Well, you can keep track of the unforced errors. Nine for Magazine, seven for Federer in this set. But you have to take it with a grain of salt. There's going to be a lot of unforced errors, no, no question. That's amazing, that point. The only thing they could do was hit it right down the middle to yeah. each other. And you could see it bending. From uh, Agassiz's point of view, when you're looking at it, he's at the top of your screen. The ball going left to right, curving back into Federer, and for Federer doing the opposite. Play from Federer. Use that wind to your advantage. He got it up high. The wind kept it easily in the court, almost too short because Agassi is able to get back and have time to spin around and make a decent hit on that ball. Federer not able to get his feet in position for that volley. Now 40 15, Agassi trying to move ahead 4 3. That's rule number one in the win. Tiny steps, always adjusting until the very last second, simply because you don't know where that ball is going to be moment to moment. Gil Reyes, Stephanie Graf now, no longer Steffi. I'm learning from the best. Struggled with that all week. <laughs> Hard to break habits. Agassi gets the hold, and today they'll take it however it comes. At the moment, no breaks. Fourth set. Agassi slightly ahead. And you can't help but look at the draw. And Federer and Agassi say that they don't look too far ahead, but they've got to know at this stage, playing each other, two of the best in the game, that if they get through, 
they reach that semifinals. They know they have to play two players that haven't done more than where they are right now, and her body and Henman are beatable players in semifinals of majors. So they see, okay, this is the match. If I get through this one and I keep playing solidly in the semifinals, I've got a real good look at the finals, and then we'll readjust from there. Well, as the weather continues to hopefully hold here, the semifinals on the men's side would be set. The winner of this to take on the winner of her body, Henman, going on in grandstand, and then later, the winner of the Tommy Haas Leighton Hewitt match we face the winner of the Joachim Johansson Andy Roddick match. The women's semis already set. They'll play tomorrow. Jennifer Capriati to face Elena Dementieva. And Lindsay Davenport will face Svetlana Kuznetsova. Time. So Roger Federer going to stay with Andre Agassi. It's windy day of what was once Hurricane Francis. The moisture has departed for the moment and now we're left with a stiff breeze. Look at how quickly those clouds cover the sun. It's like a plane going overhead. Yeah, they're just racing across the sky. Double fault from Federer, his first here in this fourth set. Got such a strong wind behind him, you're trying to dip that ball heavy topspin, keep it in the court. Pulled down too much. Well, today you're not just making adjustments based on what your opponent does, but you're having to adjust based on the weather, based on the wind. And sometimes those adjustments have to be made in mid swing. shot that one that gets the cover. Well Agassi wanted a let. Didn't get it. I'm not sure what he saw. Point's gonna go to Federer. It's gonna be 30 all. Agassi had a little bit of a lead there. Federer make sure it stays gone. 40-30. There, as you can see, the net taking a dip. Oh. It's just too bad. These two are unable to perform at their normal high level because of the wind. Make it over the net. Game point for Federer. Federer's hit his biggest 131 last night. Ball crossing the net and then a move immediately moving right. The right hand side of your screen. And it saves the game point. Deuce. So now we've got the wind blowing left to right on your picture.
refusing to catch that toss, which began to blow behind his head. And serves a double fall, and he gives Agassi a chance to break. And now you start questioning, well, do I just go for a second? Get it safely in here. starts, Federer is in an advantage because he's got that wind so strongly at his back. Anything he hits has so much more pace. Andre, on the other hand, that ball for sure is going to sit up because he's got nothing behind it. He's got to hit it twice as hard. And also moving toward that forehand side of Agassi. to create a big angle. And Federer back to game point. doubled his concentration under the circumstances. They're really struggling to get through this game. Fourth deuce. And another break point for Andre Agassi. third. it could go without going out. Clearly in. Jones here wanted to be out. And fifth deuce. Four double faults this set. I guess that's at least three double faults in this game. Yep, three in this game, yeah. And it gives Agassi another break point. How many will Agassi get before he converts? Such a tug of war. Neither player giving up that ground, but facing. Break points already. Agassi's had four on Federer, and Federer's had two on Agassi. They get so tough, though, when they need. Andre Agassi won too many opportunities to break. The crowd sensing it. And 
there's the break. In a way, that's fitting how that worked out. Agassi with a bit of luck. It's been such a scrappy match ever since they walked on the I court. I hate to win it that way, but I take it every time. My wife and trainer, best friend, couldn't be happier. So Agassi breaking, and now he'll serve to force a fifth set. mentioned that strategy. And Federer might be showing signs of picking up on exactly that, the success that you could have by just getting to net and simplifying the game. Get up there that time. And the nice thing about being on this side of the court is that under pressure, you'd rather be able to swing away. And this is a pressure moment for Agassi to consolidate that break. He can hit as much as he wants into the wind. Trying to get to a fifth set. And he's not only consolidating a break, he's consolidating this set. Federer works his way in. Agassi can't handle it. Curious, Andre. That one was fairly tough. He didn't have a whole lot of time. But why he hasn't gone for the lob? Federer now trying to shorten up his backswing. Andre's already got that as part of his arsenal. I guess he now two points from the set. And Andre Agassi, much to the delight of this crowd, with a set point to force a fifth. Go to five. Andre Agassi keeps his hopes alive and keeps the crowd happy. He's forced a fifth and final set. He said so. Natural. Those last couple games from Federer. He's trying to make adjustments, but from that side, with the wind at his back under pressure, it wasn't really possible for him to pull off. You don't get any practice in these type of situations. I, mean, I don't even know if Federer has ever had to play in wind like this. No, it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, it's fact, something they have to deal with. It just means we don't get to see the high level of tennis we normally see between these two, but we do get to see how the top players in the world handle 
a situation like this. Federer, to me, was clearly more affected by the win, at least emotionally, than Andre Agassi. I saw Agassi look aggravated a couple of times, but Federer very often aggravated with the conditions in that fourth set. So 34-year-old Andre Agassi trying to become the second oldest Grand Slam champion here at the U.S. Open from Rose Wall winning it when he was 35 years old. He's keeping that dream alive. But Roger Federer serves to begin the fifth and final set. Fifteen. Oh. 2004, Federer six and seven. Excuse me. Yeah. Start that over. In his career, Federer is just six and seven in five set eight. matches. Agassi, 23 and 20. Federer really has not played a lot of five setters. Oh. In fact, Federer has lost his last four five set matches. He hasn't won one since 2001 Wimbledon. It's because he beats most people pretty easily. Good point. But that's still an interesting step. Oh, Agassi has lost his last two five-set matches. Go back to last year's French Open to find a five-setter that Agassi's won. And Federer holds pretty easily here to start the fifth. Five-setter that the only one he's played this year was one of the most exciting matches I've seen this year, Agassi against Murat Safin in the semifinals of the Australian Open. They were playing a game that was not tennis. I mean, it, it felt more like table tennis. The ball was moving at speeds I have never seen before on ground strokes, and Safin winning that in the fifth. As we look back at the fourth set stats, well, it was really just all about those break points. It's about guts. It's about dealing with the elements. Both had chances. Agassi was able to finally break through. And this is an easier side now for Agassi, and he's right back over here for two more games. So the way the coin toss and the change of sides has worked out. It's been a beautiful thing for Agassi because he's been on this side, able to close out that fourth set, and now get an advantage here in the fifth. You see how you just can't control the ball from Federer's side of the court. It's like greased lightning over there. You touch the ball and it's gone. Continues to roll along here, 40 love. Fuck it up. Since the start of 2001, Agassi has reached the quarters or better in 11 of the 14 slams he's played. Incredible record. Agassi's Grand Slam record, it's five set experience, and it's that experience, that One wisdom game. that is helping Agassi win this match right now. This is a pretty wicked shot that Federer can't handle. It gives Agassi the game, and now one all. Didn't bring it back down in the court. Showing he's got a little bit more in his stroke that can go wrong, Federer. Of course, it takes 35 mile an hour winds to expose it. Obviously, with 
15 is the more compact of the two in terms of swings. Better with much more full swing. Looks to really wind up. And you see Federer trying to shorten it there, but dumping it in the net. 15 is. Throwing in the ace. 14 now. Paul Kidd chasing a piece of paper around the court, trying to pick it up. There it is. So Federer holds, no breaks here in the fifth and final set in his quarterfinals. We can confirm now that Tim Hinman has just in his first U.S. Open semifinal. He's defeated Dominic Curbati over in the grandstand in four sets. What a year for Tim Hinman. It happened to a nicer guy. I always feel for him when he can't get past that semifinal round of Wimbledon because he just feel the pressure that he's under. Relentless British public. They won't accept anything but perfection and they want their Wimbledon champion. Started that Hedman did last year when he won that Paris Tennis Masters Series, the first one he had ever won in his career. The last turn of the year, he didn't qualify for the Houston event. And he had a great year this year. I thought that this was his year to win with. Hedman reached his second semifinal in the Grand Slam this year. He was the French of all time. Wimbledon, though, before the semifinals, quarters. Time. I can see that wind driving the body nuts. Yeah. Well, here in Arthur Ashe Stadium, Roger Federer and Andre Agassi play on. We're in the fifth set. When we started coverage today, it was deuce in the first game of the fourth. Agassi has survived the elements and serves now at 1-2, fifth and final set. Jeff last yeah, night in the third set. It felt like Agassi had all the momentum. Felt like he would take control of it. Federer just found a way to grind out games and ended up breaking once and then holding to the set. And looks can be deceiving even when you're shanking shots like that. They're still on serve. Tangible that Federer has, not actually not so intangible as his serve. Just look at the aces, 14 compared to three, he gets three more three points. Floating that one, and the wind took it right out. That looked like my tee shot on number three, that one. A little fading slice into the woods. 30-15 for Agassi. Pretty all. 
Very close to a break here. This is gotta get this point. Ten. And Federer has a break point. What a nice scrap there, and that's the beauty of playing the win. Federer got it up and let everything else happen on its own, and then reverse for Andre. Break point. And the break point can't be converted by Federer. That's surprising. Quickly going for something big. Better a little impatient there. Now game point Agassi. We get to two all. Federer shaking his head in frustration and now talking to himself as he had his chance to break in that game and could not get it done. It's two all, fifth set. And we definitely see more frustration from Roger Federer today. Two all. Let's Umpire's chair to go. Safe approach shot from Federer. And another safe volley there. You just can't put it where you want to. I guess he's doing a better job of finding his spot. Great serve from Federer. Only 103 miles an hour. Perfectly placed and with spin. Going away from Agassi. 15 all. himself in the fact that he's not down a break. He was very close. Federer holds and stays in front. No breaks here in the fifth set. Well, if there's ever a match that's going to make Federer revert back to when he was a 12 year old and breaking rackets and throwing tantrums, it'd be a match like this. Yeah. It's amazing to think that in all his calm, he used to be so volatile. Went to a 
sports psychologist back when he was little. That helped him quite a bit. If there's any evidence that people can change, you're looking at what got right there. I mean, what a transformation Agassiz made as well from 10 years ago. Talking about the diet and the image. Diet, the image, the lifestyle. You can see a very different man now than he was 10 years ago. Very much. His happiest moments are with his family now. Roger Federer just making his way. Federer has been ranked number one in the world since February. Andre Agassi trying to stay with Federer here in the fifth set. As he came out after a rain delay last night, won the fourth set to force this fifth. Now he'll serve at 2-3 with new balls. Right on the line, 113 miles an hour, fourth ace. This fifth set goes to a tiebreaker. It's going to be a heck of a nervous affair. Because you're in these elements that are making you so uncomfortable to begin with, and then the moment and the pressure about that moment exacerbates everything else. U.S. Open, the only of the four Grand Slams that plays a tiebreaker in the fifth set. And Agassi settles down this time, holds it love. It's three all. Agassi had faced a break point in his last service game. Clean from right over top of the stadium here, just before. Right up at that plane flying high overhead. Unfortunately for him, the ball goes out. Agassi checking it out. That's it. Thirty love. Crazy. Fox it oh, wasn't pretty, but it worked. You just, you just make contact here if you're Federer. Just try to get it over. He was caught. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one way to do it. Federer polishing off the game with the ace. Moves ahead 4-3, but Agassi still staying on his heels. One break point in this fifth set so far. Federer had one, so he's serving at one, two, unable to get it. And no one men semifinalist, it's Tim Henman. And no our other at the conclusion of this set. Semis taking place on Saturday, so the winners today will have a day off tomorrow. Well, it's the women's semifinals. It looks like we're going 
going to get it off without a hitch. He's supposed to have not already gone through this section of the country on its way out. Beautiful weekend on tap here in the New York area. And these two will get to continue to enjoy the weather. The other one probably get on a plane and head home. And enjoy his prize money. Speaking of prize money, Andre Agassi finished third in the U.S. Open Series this year, so he gets a 10% bump on whatever prize money he wins here at the U.S. Open. It's probably the least important thing on his mind right now. So he's trying to stay in here with Federer, serving 3-4, fifth set. What he made so far. Now to get to the quarterfinals, we win 130,000 on the men and women's side. Semifinalist is guaranteed 260,000 American dollars. Uh, I guess he was third, so it's just 10%, so $13,000 extra. It's Let's chump change to this one. Next year it's going to be even bigger, though. Next year. It's a hundred percent. And hey, Andre came in third. I mean, you can't get that big of a bump. You come in third, you got to win it. its effect. This is just getting that to slide over the net. Well, the player who wins this match is going to be the one who can control himself inside. Two bounces. Federer takes the point. It's 30 all. If Federer could break here, he would serve for a spot in the semifinals. Federer has had one break chance looking for a second. <laughs> How close is that? Right idea, but he didn't have to make it this good because he's got the win in his side. He wanted to just hit that little dropper. Not, it just barely missed it. So instead of break point, it's game point Agassi. game that helps him in this situation under pressure he can come in with confidence. Well, Agassi's second serve has been more effective than his first in this fifth set. He's only dropped one point when he's had to go to the second serve. Gets back to game point. And I think the reason for that is that in the first serve, it's easier to connect on the return because it's coming in harder. It's coming in straighter. Cuts through the air a little bit. Cool. Oh, he 
got it. Federer saving the game point with a lob into the wind. And that's keeping yourself calm inside. To have that steely nerve and just simply be intelligent about what's going on out here. Great awareness. And Federer will have a chance to break here. Biggest point of the match for Andre Agassi, no question. If Federer wins this point, he'll serve for the semifinals. serve for the match. Roger Federer, eight titles this year, defended his Wimbledon crown, won the Australian Open to start the year off. He's trying to make a statement right here, beating Andre Agassi in a tournament that he's won twice. Everyone loves him. Agassi goes for too much here. And Federer with the realization, the semifinals, Looking pretty good right now. 5-3, fifth set. Oh! I guess he's dealt with situations like this before. Doesn't mind returning, that's for sure. Tough to return that, 15 all. And again, so has Federer in his young career. Oh. Roger Federer. After three hours now, two points from the match. And it's going to get behind Agassi here. And to push the American on. And now Roger Federer stands on the verge of advancing to his first ever U.S. Open semifinal. Two match points, 40-15. What a statement from Roger Federer. Roger Federer is a semifinalist at the U.S. Open for the first time. He survives the conditions. Not a good day to play tennis, but it is the number one player in the world justifiably advancing. And it's that number one ranking that he so cherishes Federer. He's had it all year since the Australian Open. He wants to keep putting distance between himself and Andy Roddick. And that matchup with those two players, one-sided for Federer. And now that he takes out Andre Agassi in New York, he's starting to show everyone what they already believe, that Roger Federer is starting to own men's tennis. 